Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome in to our band show. I cannot believe we are back for our 17th episode. Thank you, everyone, who's been supporting the show since day one. It's been amazing bringing so many incredibly talented bands, and especially ones from right here at home. We really feel pride when we get to show you an awesome band from right here in the Hudson Valley. And tonight we get to do just that. So stick around, grab some popcorn, drop a head of lettuce. It's a very healthy group of guys we have. Drop a health of let a head of lettuce in the chat if you'd like to show the band some love and sit back, enjoy the tunes of Sonote. Gentlemen, take it away. Fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> so good. I mean, we have a lot to talk about. Your sound, um, how you guys got to know each other, uh, among many other things. The band name is very interesting, as a matter of fact. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you're just joining us, welcome. Uh, this is our band show. This is our 17th episode, and we are just so thrilled to be joined tonight by the fine, amazingly talented gentlemen of the band, Sonote. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you so much for having us on. Thank you. Of course. So, guys, uh, you know, um, we've been listening to the awesome tunes all day, and our audience will now be lucky enough to do the same. So I think it would be fun to, I definitely want to talk about those tunes, but first, just dive in, you know, like, let's let's let the audience get to know you a little bit. Let's let's hear the origin story of the band. How did you guys meet? Um, how did this Ooh. band get formed? <clears throat> and all that good stuff. We met a while ago. Yeah, it was a little while ago. I don't really remember it. Um... We were probably both there, though. I'm sure we were both there, yeah. <laughs> we're brothers. Did you tell the audience we're brothers? No, I didn't. Oh, yeah. Okay. We're that's <laughs> oh, yeah. we're siblings, um, pretty close in age, so we've always known each other. We started playing together, oh, uh, I don't know. I think we I, was, probably... I was eight, so you must have been 10. Yeah, we probably didn't play together for the first, probably a couple of years after you picked up drums, we started jamming on, like, I don't know, whatever we had whatever Led Zeppelin or Van Halen we were listening to. Really? You guys have been playing together since you were, like, super little? Yeah, probably, like, 12 or 13. Yeah, oh, we were young. Nice. That's um, awesome. I actually started off trying to play guitar like Will, um, but I, I don't know. I didn't have the attention span for it, or it just didn't interest me, and then uh, I got a drum set a couple years later. A little later less headroom, Eric? And that was that. And then we started, we figured out, hey, we could just 
put the guitar and the drums in the same room and then we could play together. A novel discovery. Mm -hmm. You know, it's um, it's kind of convenient when you have uh, a two piece. It does help to have a drummer if you want to be in a band. So it kind of worked out, right? <laughs> yeah, drummers tend to be the hardest to find, I've heard. So uh, this is, it's really, like you said, very I, convenient. I've heard that, but that has not been our experience. Yeah, we, <laughs> we're working on bassist right now. True, and if, uh, if, if anyone in the audience is interested, should they reach out? Yeah, why not? Okay, there you go. If you guys think you can keep up, I've been a musician my whole life. I don't know. It seems a little bit intimidating jamming with Cenote. There's a lot going on, a lot of different uh, dynamics and, and styles that fuse together. But we'll, we'll get to all that. We'll get to all that. So you guys are playing when you're young, 12, 13. You're doing Van Halen covers, Led Zeppelin covers, the great ones, as, uh, as they're now known. Classics. Uh, the classics. But how did we get here to this amazing amalgamation of so many different styles what's what's the missing pieces there um it's just just a lifetime of listening to music so like i said i started out with like van halen stuff that the noisy lead guitar sound and then moved on to stuff like follow troy which more noisy lead guitar sound and that's just kind of been my trajectory now i listen to stuff like vilgiardo which is just crazy noisy lead guitar sound and then with all sorts of other stuff in the middle i was a bit huge cloud kicker fan He's a, he's like a, a solo project most of the time. Again, big guitar sound, big drum sound, and that's it's closer to some of the stuff we put out recently. We were talking a little bit about Chan as well before we went live. Yep, we were both big Chan fans. Yeah. Um, that's that's all you just heard. I for sure wrote that when I was in a Chan phase. It has um, the vibe, but it also has a unique characteristic that I think is your own. I which appreciate is, that. Yeah, of course. Thank well, you. we'll dive into that more too because man there's just so many different things that you know you you guys pull together um the one thing i think is so fascinating it's so much sound is being made from two people and it continues to keep it interesting you know it's it's uh, i feel like it's not like i'm wishing as an audio engineer right i'm not like where's the bass you know where's the rhythm guitar it's like wow this is a lot but in a really good way and a really compact way that is also digestible because you guys do have a lot going on you know so i said earlier to you guys it's like controlled chaos which i think is fantastic i think any band in your genre should strive to achieve that so the audience can also enjoy it so i mean when you compose songs do you think about these things or how do you approach writing um how, how do i approach writing uh well, like you said, we are we're a two piece, and we have to fill up the whole sound. So that is kind of what I have in mind when I'm writing. Is yeah, all... that that was kind of just born out of necessity because there were we were in a band in high school, which was a five, right? There were f that sounds right. Five of us. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Um. But you know, we we split. People went their separate ways, and then um, it was just me and Will hanging out, jamming in our mom's basement. Um. And, you know, the first, like, you remember some of the earlier stuff we wrote at that time was, was a little thin. Still is. Um, we, yeah, we didn't really, we hadn't really rounded out how to make a whole sound out of two people yet. So that was, um, you know, that was a process. Thin how? Because if you haven't changed the elements, just you two, what have you done to make it feel more full? Um... Writing style, I guess. So, like, in the song we're going to play, I think, next um, is probably what he's referring to. That was That's probably our oldest song in rotation right now. It's a lot of me playing, like, single-note melody stuff without a lot of big chords, and I think it sounds thin. Like, in the recorded versions, I, I go back and I, I write a harmony and I write a bass line, and it fills it out. But um, another song we just dropped, same thing. So it's just a lot of single-note stuff. And, uh, yeah, we just, we didn't think it, it sounds like a, yeah, I don't know how to describe it. It just sounds thin. Like there's not enough going on. So like when I'm writing now, I'll come up with a melody or something and then I'll see like, okay, how can I expand this up or down to play a, a larger chord to fill up our sound so that I can sound like we have a rhythm guitarist with me or a bassist maybe even. Right, I was going to ask that next. I was going to jump to the voicings of the chords and the way that you are simultaneously, it seems like you're, you're managing a, a bass line, you know, with the, uh, the, the E and the A string while playing melodies. Of course, they're, the melodies are beautiful and they're, 
they're right there in your face. So you're you're like you're thinking about that as you're composing, or at this point, is it so second nature that you know you need those elements? Like, 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 how are you making it less thin as the guitar player? It's become second nature at this point. It's something I had to figure out slowly over time. I'm not the only one who does that, by the way. Like, classical guitarists have been doing, you know, bass line with their thumb, melody with their their fingers forever. It's just I'm uh, applying it to our sound, which is sort of a noisy kind of basement metal sound, which I, th- I think probably contributes to why we sound a little different. Is that how you would describe yourself? Basement metal? or <laughs> we, we still haven't nailed that down. We're not sure. Really? I don't know. You decide. Um, We're yeah. going to play basically everything we have. <laughs> I can't. That's that's uh, that's a, a job I don't want. Well, the audience, um, what do but, we sound like? Because I think it's unfair with how eclectic I think everyone will learn. You know, we, we only just heard one song, but I think it would be kind of unfair to put you guys in a box, whereas I think like certain guys would be like, no, we're a blues band. That's what we do, and we do it really well. They would want to be in that box, you know, but I feel like you guys, you got to just breathe and, and live where you may fall, in a sense. Yeah, that's kind of what we've been doing. We haven't really found a box that we could fit everything into neatly yet because we, you know, we've been writing stuff together. Like the, the song that we're about to play is so is that almost 10 years old now. Gotta be, yeah. So we've been writing stuff together for 10 years and have really just recently gotten around to seriously recording it. And the style has changed so much and our influences have changed and shifted so much in those 10 years that we can't, and we have we have a real problem when we're thinking about like okay we need to put out an album what's going to be on it we don't have any two songs that really sound like they would go together you know be on the same album so that's uh that's kind of troublesome it's yeah. something we're working on with the next we've got most of our next album written and that was something that we wanted to focus on was making a more coherent cohesive singular work across the album so it it all sounded sort of like one big piece as opposed to our our current self-titled which is just sort of all of the random songs we had written well that's kind of a good foreshadowing for what i really want to talk about in our second interview which is your most recent release at least to my knowledge outlines and um i feel like i heard a story in my mind while listening and we'll leave it at that we'll unpack that because i did really feel as a listener of fluidity like i was on a hero's journey almost while listening to that record so more of that type of conversation to come everyone and if you want to contribute to the chat drop a head of lettuce as well to show the band some love but drop a question you know our band show loves to hear what the audience has to ask we've had a lot of great questions that we would have never have asked if you hadn't chimed in so please feel free to join the conversation and and thank you for being here with us joining us tonight and and if you like what you're hearing and you already have not please subscribe it'll cost you absolutely nothing and mean the world to us as well as give this video a like and share it with a friend sharing is caring it will definitely help the band grow and of course it will help our band show be able to continue to bring bands to you every month as is our mission here so before we dive into the second interview guys like i said we have a lot to talk about i love the band name i heard the story in our production meeting i think we got to share that with the audience can you tell them a little bit about the band name how it came to be and what it means sure uh so we are cenote cenotes are like limestone sinkholes that form in the yucatan area of mexico and the ancient mayans used to throw they believed they were portals to the underworld. They used to throw gold and sacrifices in them. And I learned that in some history course somewhere, and it stuck. So we had to come up with band names, and that was when we threw out. And neither of us hated it too much, which I don't know if you've ever had to pick a band name. I'm sure you have. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's and a random lot of, name generators are no help. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a lot of like, well, that one doesn't make me cringe so much. So and then we went with that, and... I like it now. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's kind of, I feel like at this point, it's no going back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I already made a logo. We're kind of yeah. stuck. We're kind of sold on it, which isn't bad. You know, it's not bad. We like it. Yeah. No, there's no going back. There's only going forward here. That's how our band show likes to do it. We're just at the start of the show, guys, so stick around. There is only more amazing music and great conversations to come your way. So without further ado, I love talking to these guys. It's It's been a blast so far, and I can't wait to continue the conversation. But 
what I love even more is the tunes that you're about to hear. So I don't want to keep them from you anymore. So with that said, guys, our band show, episode 17, live with Cenote. Gentlemen, can you do us the, the honor of jumping into the next set?
Incredible. Fantastic first set, gentlemen. Fantastic. Thank you so much. If you guys are just tuning in, welcome to our band show, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight we're joined by a band from right here in our very own Hudson Valley called Cenote, who's absolutely ripping, rocking this show so hard. It's absolutely incredible. Uh, we're going to talk more about their sound in just a few minutes. But before we do that, I'd like to invite on my co-producer and the man behind the switchboard, Patrick W. Huber. How you doing, Pat? Oh, man. I am uh, blown away. Um this is fantastic. It's, uh, you know, both the amazing skills on the guitar and, and the drums. Uh, you guys are, are really doing it for me, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, they are, uh, they have a chemistry, you know, um, and uh, it, it shows that you guys have been playing together for such a long time. Thank you. Of course, of course. <laughs> so, yeah, Pat, um, how you doing back there? How are things going on in your neck of the woods tonight? Uh, I think everything is great. We have, uh, you know, our fantastic camera ops. I'll give them a, a little early shout out. But uh, I'm loving the uh, camera angles that they're getting specifically. Like we're getting right up there on the uh, the guitar. And, um, yeah, this is a, a really good evening. I'm enjoying uh, what you guys are putting out. And, um you know, typically I just jump in there and throw out a question to you. And uh, I'm just curious, like, since this is an instrumental uh, band and that's what the material that you've been crafting for, um, you know, your run as a band, uh, how do you create the themes of the music and, and really just convey to the audience, um, you know, the emotion behind your music? That is a good question with different answers. Um, <laughs> Your mic's away. Uh, yeah, or no answer. So the we didn't used to. Uh, the honest truth is, some of our older songs aren't about anything. Um, we especially like uh, a good chunk of the self-titled album is just like we. This sounded cool. Let's play it together. Yeah, a lot of the most of the stuff that we just played. Yeah, and then we'll ascribe meaning to it later. Um, we're working on now with the later releases and our upcoming releases working more within a theme and trying to to um to convey messages through music um you brought up chris the the ep we just put out that was sort of a a test bed it was like a, an, an exercise for us in a lot of things but part of it was writing like um what goes into writing a, a concept piece like where we have to convey something with the songs so like in a way it's it's easier to do as an instrumental, well, maybe not easier, but like the way we, I see it at least is as an instrumental band, we don't have to convey an exact story, like a specific story. Like there's no lyrics telling you what's happening. We're, we're focused more, or I'm focused more. Sorry to speak for you. That's okay. On, uh, on conveying a general feeling and then like the song title can sort of help guide you that way and you feel you know, whatever you want. And like, like I might have a, a specific story in mind when I'm writing it and I'll try and think like, what, what sounds like this? What would make me feel like this? And it's up to the listener to like, you know, hear what they hear. Yeah, that's really cool. And, you know, let me jump in because I think we spoke about it during our production meeting. I said that your album, uh, the newest EP outlines, um, I kind of felt like I was on like a hero's journey, you know, kind of like you're, you know, uh, the, the rises, the falls, but ultimately, ultimately you get to that heroic climax and there's a feeling of success and achievement um, towards the end of the record. I think the visual you paired with it also kind of cemented that feeling I cool. was having in my head while listening to the record. But, you know, it is true. I mean, uh, it, it's, it's definitely a little more open-ended, but I, I still kind of felt like I, I went on a musical a journey you know a hero's journey a musical ride that's awesome that's yeah that's what we were going for um with that one the idea was um again i'm thinking in these generalized terms so we're like what if the concept was just it's the outline of a story so it's just like like story points a points a story would hit and then uh, without getting really specific into it and then trying to make music that fit that um and then congeal that into a concept EP, I guess. 
again, like as a songwriting exercise for our next piece, we want to be a more singular work. We're trying to trying to expand on stuff we're learning as we go and uh, make art like the people we listen to. Like we listen to a lot of bands that put out like these concept albums. Like I'm a huge Between the Barry to Me fan and all their albums are like start to finish almost a singular piece of music. And that's something I really aspire to. Yeah, Colors is like a life-changing Absolutely. metal record. Yeah, man. Um, I really enjoyed that one that yeah. they put out in the um, early 2010s that had a lot of piano and singing on it. The name escapes me right now. Ooh, but, Coma uh, Ecliptic? Yeah. 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 Also very cool. No, I totally get that vibe from you guys. It was also um, just an experiment in terms of how we write songs. Um because, you know, we are just two people. Most of the songs, if you if you listen to them, or all of them, I guess, have uh, there's a lot of layering involved. Um, you know, Will would write a piece and then layer something over it and layer something over it and layer something over it until it really uh, filled out quite a bit. Because um, if you listen to those, there's a lot of tracks overlaid. And then he... They're all just based on, like, you know, simple looped themes and we would loop this thing and see what else we could build onto it and then he uh did this entirely independent and then sent them to me and he was like hey what do you think about this um i want to try this thing where we just you know record one of these in a day just whatever you think goes over it um that's what we record so that was a really interesting experience because it was like I don't know, how many songs are there? Five? Yeah, so it was like just five weeks in a row. I would go to his house on, on Sunday, and we would just get in the basement. And um, I mean, I didn't tell Will this yet, but I listened to those songs maybe twice, three times before we actually sat down to record them. He had sent me the tracks, but I, I think I... Months ahead of time. Yeah, months ahead of time. And I think I only listened to them like you know, two or three times. And uh, When was this you recorded them again? We finished up a few months ago, probably. No, it wasn't a few months ago, was it? Feels like, I don't know, last month or something? Nah. Really? It feels yeah. so much more polished listening to you guys play them today. This is very intricate music, and I, you haven't missed a beat. Oh, thank so you. So that's pretty crazy to hear. We have, but we're pretty good at covering <laughs> it up at this point. Yeah, we just sat down and, and we recorded, at least we recorded drums for all those songs in, in one take. Well, I would, I would sit down and I would Several takes, to but it. continuous takes. Yeah, I would listen to it through the headphones and we'd give it a rip and I'd stop halfway through and I'm like, no, that's not it. Or, you know, just listening to it several times over to try to figure out what I'm going to do. And we would do that, you know, 25, 30 times in a row until I could get all the way through it with something that we both were like, yeah, we like that, and then call it a day. And mm. that's... Uh, I tried to explain that you can edit audio and you don't need to play it all in one shot, but... But if you can, you're up there with the great ones. It was, an, it was a really interesting uh, experiment, though, for both it of was. us, I think. It was, it was kind of fun. It was infuriating towards the <laughs> end, but it was kind of fun to try and write and record something like that. Yeah. Every part of that EP was an experiment in something to try and see if we could make a bigger album next. And it's all about growth, you know. Um, speaking of that, uh, Pat has some questions kind of yeah. in a similar topic about growth and future plans and whatnot. So I'll, t I'll toss it back over to Pat. Oh, I, I very well do appreciate that. Um, hey, listen, uh, you guys obviously are putting together your album and uh, tightening up that sound. And I know you've kind of hinted at the future direction of the band. But, you know, one of the things I think we talked about as we were setting up today is like, our lyrics coming? Are you going to start developing, uh, you know, and singing with your songs? Is that going to be like a special project, its own kind of album? Uh, and then what else is for the future? You know, it, it's I think you talked about trying to get into some basement gigs and start performing in front of uh, crowds, not just the uh, digital audience that we have here. Yeah. All right. I'll take. Oh, uh, man, that was a lot of questions that felt like. Uh Lyrics. We've experimented with lyrics in the past. There is a version of one of the songs we just played with lyrics. It exists. It's not for public consumption. Um, we're not opposed to lyrics. Uh, I hadn't broached the subject, but now live on stream, I guess, is 
good time as any. I was considering doing some vocals for some of the new songs when we record. I can't do it while we play, so I don't know. We hadn't discussed how it would work yet. But yeah, no, we're not opposed to vocals. It just yeah. hasn't been part of our sound. We're not really, for us, I think playing, uh, playing more shows um, is first and foremost. Absolutely. And second would be getting a bassist. We definitely need a bassist more than we need a vocalist. For um, sure. I don't know. We, we, we kind of agreed, like, we want to keep this project uh, mostly instrumental. Yeah. Maybe there are going to be a few songs here and there that need vocals on them, but we're not, not enough to merit, like, recruiting a vocalist to permanently join the band or anything like that. Um, so we're, I don't think that's really uh, too high up on our, on our list of priorities. Um, Really just getting out there and, and playing more shows and meeting more bands, I'd say, is, is probably yeah. number one for us. We do have a show coming up in Nyack on April 27th. You can find the info on our Instagram. So 27th or 28th. And what's the handle? Uh, we are, well, we're probably Cenote Band. We're pro- probably? What do you mean probably? <laughs> like 80% <laughs> sure we're at Cenote Band. Okay. We'll definitely link it in the description That's so good. there won't be any discrepancy. If you guys want to follow and support the guys... Hit the link in the description after this has been posted for a little while. We'll go in there and toss that down for you so you can keep up with them. And uh, go check out that show, maybe. Head on down to Nyack. Um, Go see some great live music. After you watch it here, go see it in person. Uh, With that said, guys, thank you for everyone who's hanging out with us tonight. Just enjoying these great tunes. We appreciate the R Band Show audience more than you could know. And, you know, one last time, we just want to ask you to like, subscribe, comment, and, and share this with a friend. It'll help us and the band do it do what they're talking about get our names out there and just you know meet more people and just keep on jamming so speaking of keeping on the jams i would really like to hear some more music guys are you up for it all right yeah fantastic roll let's uh it. yeah let's roll into our next set with uh our first song here to start off the second set arms race
Oh, man. Fantastic. Thank you so much. <laughs> so good. Just absolutely wild. Thank you. I got a lot of brain picking to do about your uh, guitar pedal board uh, while we're eating dinner in a bit. But um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we could talk all night, and we'd love to. But we also um, would love to share some of the uh, amazing guests that have graced the stage in the past, what they're up to. Isn't that right, Pat? 100%. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> that time of the show uh, that we go and look at the community calendar and we basically see what all the other bands are up to. So, you know, definitely go ahead and jump on Instagram and look up all of our previous bands and get all those details about where they're performing. Uh, we did our best to comb through it and give you sort of a jumping off point, but definitely, uh, you know, subscribe and, and follow uh, your favorite bands and, and check them out. And so without further ado, here we are. Let's... Uh, Let's see what's going on in the world of our band show alumni. Trying rack, you gotta pick up the slack. Wasn't feeling much of a kindly move, the guy was always on back. Jenny drinks his gin with a crooked grin, straight from the rack. And then he's feeling steel behind the wheel, you know him then crack. The wine tastes bitter and one thing's known. If something goes wrong, you gotta tiptoe, the bottle's gone, Jenny slips it and all.
Hey, and I hope that you enjoyed watching all of that community calendar and that you wrote down some of the locations and shows. And definitely, like I said, check out all previous guests uh, on their Instagrams. And, uh, you know, if you like the band, check out a show. Uh, I would like to basically just go ahead and cut here to our uh, studio here and thank the crew uh, that is helping us out here uh, this weekend. Uh, you know, none other than Eric Greenop. Uh, you know, Dan Chester is there, Kira Stack, uh, Manuel Fatekis uh, is there, um, you know, and I believe uh, that rounds out everybody that's uh, helping us out uh, this weekend. Hold on. Whoa. You know, the crew is going wild. They actually are cutting to uh, each other. So, uh, yeah, everyone's <laughs> looking. I think they're doing the uh, wave. Yeah. Where's the show? Oh, wait, hold on. There's uh, <laughs> there's Eric Greenop uh, over there. Uh, he's like in a day for night shot. It's almost like it's bedtime for Eric Greenup. But uh, hey, <laughs> you know, this is a fantastic opportunity for us to check out our, and thank our crew. So great job. Round of applause uh, to them. And I just want to go ahead and uh, throw it back to you, Christian. Uh, take us away. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, Pat. So it would be remiss of us to not only thank the crew, but thank you guys, Sonote, for coming on and jamming with us tonight. What a show it's been so far. And we're not done yet, but we're almost there. So we just wanted to take a minute to thank you guys for coming on our band show this weekend. Thank you. This was awesome. This was so much fun. Yeah, of thank you so much for having us. We've our pleasure. It. Thank you also for raising uh, awareness for bird flu. Oh, you're welcome. Um, hey, the more we can do to help, the better our world will be uh with that said i think people would be better off if they knew where to find you follow you keep up to date with all of the great cenote music where can they do that guys uh we're on instagram we are at cenote band we About 80 percent sure right yeah, yeah probably <laughs> um it, it's either cenote band or cenote new york same thing uh we're on Bandcamp. all of our music is on Bandcamp. we have one ep on spotify we'll get more up there eventually Oh man, we are. We have a YouTube channel. It all links to each other, and we're playing a show, playing at Olives in Nyack on September twenty seventh, or not? Woof, not September. April, the month that it currently is. Right. It, <laughs> it's April, folks. It is April. It's April. Just in case we confused anybody there. Um, and that's not a joke. Not an April Fool's joke. It's so April. Um. No, that that's it. That's us. I think. You got anything? Uh, no, just always when you're changing your oil, always take uh, make sure the old gasket comes out with the oil filter before you put the new one in. Good advice. It's true. Thanks, Dad. Words to live by. Uh, and, and, you know, speaking of music that they will have on streaming services, we're happy to announce to the Our Band Show community that you can now take us on the run, baby. Just like REO Speedwagon said, you can listen to our band show on all the major streaming services. Starting April 19th, we will be releasing our last session in February. Uh, not our last session, but our session in February with Shortwave Radio Band for your ears only. That's going to be on Spotify, Apple, Amazon, YouTube Music, Stitcher, and of course, in my opinion, the best streaming service, Deezer. So, you know... Keep your ears peeled. Our band show is expanding. And, of course, we're going to throw up Sonote session on there after this whole cycle's done. So you can catch that in the middle of May. But uh, we're growing, guys, and it's all because of you. You guys watching the show, supporting the show, being here month in, month out, checking the bands out, even after the fact, saying you caught them at a show and you saw them on our band show. It's, it's really cool to hear those type of stories happening. And uh, we thank you for being a part of our community. It's an absolute pleasure. Uh, so one last time, if you haven't, we, we would love to keep this thing growing and going. A little a little thing that we like to ask is just subscribe, um, like, share. It's all you have to do to show that you care. It means the world to us and will cost you absolutely nothing. Um, 17 episodes. It is truly a gift to have been able to uh, run this show for as long as we have now, and there's no signs of stopping, and that is just fantastic. So uh, with that said, I think it's time to, uh, to play out the final set, guys. What do you think? You guys ready to play? Absolutely. Final okay, fantastic. Right. So for the last time with sadness but excitement, because I do really love these last two songs, I I I'm pleased to hand it over to Sonote to uh, rock the stage. Take it away, guys. <laughs> 